The 2020 Defence Strategic Update highlighted a rapidly deteriorating strategic environment in our near region. The Indo-Pacific is now at the epicentre of strategic competition and the risks of miscalculation are increasing. The government remains committed to protecting Australia and its national interests and that of our partner nations in a rapidly changing global environment. In the Indo-Pacific, military modernisation is occurring at an unprecedented rate. Capabilities are rapidly advancing and their reach expanding. The technological edge enjoyed by Australia and our partners is narrowing. There is no doubt that we are operating in complex and uncertain times. It is important now more than ever that our Navy is prepared and able to deter and respond to threats in our region. To do this, we must invest in the right military technologies. These capabilities will enable us to continue to defend Australia and its national interests. Today, on the 16th of September, the Prime Minister announced an enhanced trilateral security partnership between Australia, the United Kingdom and the United States, to be known as AUKUS. This partnership is based on a shared vision for a stable, secure and prosperous Indo-Pacific, building on our already rich relationships. AUKUS will allow Defence to enhance our joint capabilities and interoperability with an initial focus on cyber capabilities, artificial intelligence, quantum technologies and additional undersea capabilities. The first major initiative under AUKUS is the acquisition of a nuclear powered submarine capability for our Navy. This is the single most consequential capability decision, certainly in my lifetime, and it will shape the direction of our Navy forevermore. It heralds a new era for our Navy and will no doubt change the shape of our nation. I welcome this announcement and the decision by government to ensure that our people have the capabilities that we need to fight and win at sea. The pace of change means that in the future, a conventional submarine, no matter how advanced, will be unable to undertake the full range of required activities across the region. Nuclear powered submarines have superior characteristics of stealth, speed, maneuverability, survivability, and almost limitless endurance when compared to conventional submarines. They can deploy unmanned underwater vehicles and can also carry more advanced and a greater number of weapons. These abilities allow nuclear powered submarines to operate in contested areas with a lower risk of detection and deter actions against Australia's interests. Most importantly to me, this approach will give our people the very best available capability to fight and win at sea. Over the next 18 months, we will work with our UK and US counterparts to determine the optimal pathway to achieve this capability and address elements such as nuclear stewardship, regulation, training and our workforce. This work will be primarily undertaken by a dedicated task force led by Vice Admiral Jonathan Mead with various levels of support from across defence and the whole of government. In parallel, our Navy will work with the task force and other stakeholders to develop a submarine capability transition plan to work through the complex changes that will be required to successfully deliver this capability into service while continuing to sustain the Collins class submarines. In order to focus the resources where they are most needed, the Prime Minister has also announced that our government is not proceeding with the attack class submarine program. While this is a necessary step, 
there will be many of our people working on the attack class program who will be affected by this news. To that end, I want to take time to acknowledge those working in the attack class program and their extraordinary efforts over a long period of time. Thank you. And now, more than ever, your expertise is essential to our future success. For those of you thinking, what does this mean for me? It is important to note that the Navy and Defence more broadly has an important job to do today, ensuring forces are ready now to defend Australia and our national interests while concurrently delivering and transitioning to future capabilities. Apart from contributing to government directed operations and activities, over the coming decades, the National Naval Shipbuilding Program will see the delivery of nine Hunter class frigates, 10 Arafura class offshore patrol vessels, six evolved Cape class patrol boats, and up to nine new mine countermeasures and military survey vessels, an ice rated replacement for our ocean protector and a new large forward support vessel. The government has also announced an investment in the enhancement of our long range strike capability with our Hobart class destroyers to be equipped with Tomahawk cruise missiles. These capabilities coupled with our planned life of type extension of our Collins class submarines, which remains one of the most capable conventional submarines in the world, will enhance our ability to deter and respond to potential security challenges during the transition to a fleet of nuclear powered submarines. This is a critically important time for our Navy and we need all hands on deck. Some of you will be intimately involved in the development and eventual operation of this capability, our nuclear powered submarine fleet. Many though, are yet to even enlist in our Navy. The next generation will bring with them a new generation of thinking, skill and mastery, contributing to ideas and outcomes never before seen in our Navy's history. Together, we will forge a new legacy. To those currently serving, I want to thank you for your service, your efforts and your dedication. To our future Navy, I want to thank you for all that you will do. There is hard work ahead and the consultation period over the next 18 months will help us chart a course. I am confident there is nothing we cannot achieve together. We will build upon our highly capable force, a thinking, fighting and Australian Navy that will be ready to meet whatever challenges may come now and into the future.